Okay, I wanted to spend a bit of time going through um, not just the new Falcon V3, but all the other ones. Um, I have samples of all the new boards here, um, expansion boards and all that sort of stuff, and I'll pass them around as we go. So let's start with the Falcon V3. That's the photo off today's webpage, which is still the very first fresh prototype. Um, the board I'll pass around now is the, uh, it's still a prototype, this is not the actual release board, they, they have not arrived from China yet. Pass it around. But this, around. this is bigger. <laughs> so this is still a prototype board, you can tell because there is still a uh, wire that's been wired underneath the Ethernet boards because there was a mistake on the board. This, the Falcon um, 16 V3, I'll, I'll run through its features. Um, it's very similar to the V2 um, with a couple of extras. Um, it still has 16 pixel outputs. Uh, the V2 only would do 680. This board will do 1024 at 20 frames a second. Um, uh, it probably won't do 1024 at 40 frames a second and that's just due to the amount of time that it takes to pump the data out um, to the pixels, it, it's, you know, it does take time, it writes it out serially a pixel at a time and you don't actually have very much time left over if you're doing 40 frames a second. Uh, it does have three DMX LOR outputs, um, not four, I think the V2 had four, this one only has the three. Um, it also has the, in the top left hand corner there the two port ethernet switch which enables you to daisy chain them together which is a really cool thing to do if you're running, uh, you know, you've got a large yard and you don't have to keep running ethernet cables all the way back to your switch. It does have Wi-Fi, um, it has an ESP in the top left hand corner there just next to the ethernet chips. Um, you will not be able to pump the 131 data over Wi-Fi. Uh, that ether, that Wi-Fi board is just there for configuration <coughs> and for FPP sync. Um, so there is also a SD card which is just to the right of the Ethernet. Uh, there's a vertical, right? One of the things that Dave did this year is all of the inputs and outputs are vertical on the board. So if you're cramming it into a box and you've got no space around the outside, you can still plug everything in, including the SD card. Um, so you can load a FSCQ or a set of FSCQs onto the SD card um, and then you can use FPP sync protocol and you will be able to not have to pump data out over the network to these things. So in theory you do not need to network connect them into your show. You Wi-Fi connect it so that you're sending the FPP sync packet and it reads the FSCQ data locally off the board. Okay, so again significantly reducing the amount of uh, network traffic and making Wi-Fi practical. Um, it still has the OLED screen. The OLED screen has changed a little in terms of how it's mounted, which will make it easier for Daryl to replace them when we invariably break them. Um, it does have USB. There is a, a small USB connector there that is designed to run a USB sound card. Okay, it's not designed to put a USB memory stick or something else in. It's it's really just there for a sound card. And there is another header which you can see um, just to the side of the um, the LOR and DMX outputs. And that header, which oh, one? The middle one. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, that one. Uh, yeah, just here there is a um, uh, there's a little header. And there is a very cheap little sound card that you can buy. It will be less than $10, um, which you can pick up and plug into it. Um, and then you can plug a 3.5 millimeter jack in and it will do audio output as well. That probably won't be in the initial firmware. There's a few things here that probably won't be in the initial firmware when the boards arrive, um, but they will be delivered over the course of the year. There's also up here a set of headers. Uh, these headers are there for case fans. Um, and I believe they will be, you'll be able to set them to be temperature sensitive based on the, um, the temperature sensors on the board. So turn or change the speed of your fans accordingly. Um, it does have voltage protection, um, so if you reverse polarity it or you put 12 volts when you've configured in 5 volts, it won't blow the board up anymore like it did uh, with the V2. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sean did one in Vegas. He had a board, he swore it was in 12 volt mode, but he'd lent it to someone, they'd switch to 5 volt mode, and we blew it up minutes after he arrived. <laughs> it does have a real time clock as well, um, and you'll notice it has no daughter board anymore. 
right? So everything is on the board, and the board is slightly smaller than the B2. So he's crammed an awful lot in. Um, it'll be interesting to see what goes in the B4, eh? So that's the, um, the Falcon V3. Hmm. So I don't have an F4 V3. I do have an F4 V2 for those who have never seen a V2 before. Um, but here is a picture. Uh, it's bigger than the old one because, once again, the daughter board has been removed. Um, it only has the four pixel outputs. Um, but they can still do 1,024, so that's also an improvement. It only has the single DMX floor output up here in the corner. Um, it still has a two-port Ethernet switch. So if you're, uh, the beauty of these boards is that you can have several of them distributed around. It's, it's quite an expensive way to do it because these are only about half the price of the 16, and they run significantly less pixels. But if you've got smaller elements, uh, you know, I actually quite like the F4s. It still has the Wi-Fi. It'll still have the, um, the SD card here, so you can still use the FPP sync, um, and therefore just use it. It's still got the OLED screen. The USB is on this one as well. I don't think uh, actually I'm not sure the header is on this one. I could have got that one wrong. Maybe there is the sound header. I'm not sure. Um, and the headers for case fans aren't there either. I don't think. If I should have removed as well. So that, those things aren't there. Um, there definitely is the SD card reader, the voltage protection's there, the real time clock is still there, and again, no door to board. Expansion boards. Okay, so there's a couple of ways in which you can expand. Let you open that up. I'll just look through the rack either way. So using an expansion board, and the expansion board, this expansion board here is a local expansion board. It has to be located within about a foot and a half of your F16. This is not a remote board. This is a local board. Um, basically, it allows you to add up to 32 additional local outputs. Okay, so what it does is it takes those 1,024 channels and divides it up. Um, so if you add one, you get 16 extras. If you add two, you get 32 extras. Um, you can control the ratio of allocation. So it does it. If you've got two of them, you don't have to have 50 50. You can have 80 20 if you really want. Um, I got this because I run a bunch of color effects, and you can only connect 63 of those in a stream. And so by splitting it out into these things, I don't waste all the other channels on the output. Um, so that's useful for me. Um, if you're only using one expansion, then you can use either a V2 or a V3 expansion board on your Falcon. But if you want to go to 32, they both have to be the new V3s. Okay? Dave did think that he was just going to be able to use a V3 and a V2, but it turns out there's a problem on the V2 board which makes that impossible. Um, he thinks he knows how you can modify it, but it will require you to cut a trace on the V2 board, which some people may not want to do. The differential expansion boards, that's um, and there. So this is this is the Falcon 4 one, and the other one is the Falcon 16 expansion um, uh, differential expansion boards. So um, so you can add up to two of these onto the F16, um, and for each one of these, you can then add up to four of these remote boards. Okay. Um, between the expand, between this board and the remote board, you can have up to 75 metres. So you can really push it out and you end up with a very simple, very cheap board that's distributed around the garden rather than the expensive air falls or something. Um, again, you can control the allocation, but understand that when you're splitting up the number of channels that are going out, you can only set that at the form level. You can't set it for output. And the reason for that is the way the FPGA works. You can't set each one independently because it's got to set latches on the boards in order to control where the data goes. Um, uh, yeah, and the F4 um, with this expansion board has up to two remotes. Okay, and then you get your differential receivers. So this is what you plug in on the end of it. So you can't use the differential receiver without the sender, and the sender is not you don't have any receivers. Um, each one has up to four outputs. Okay, 
Um, and you can run one of these directly off the F-16 without the expansion port. So the DMX-1 port on the F-16 can actually connect to one of these remotes. You don't need an expansion board if you just want to use one of these remotes. So yeah, so it takes off the, the I think it just takes off the, the DMX, the serial output. It takes one of the serial outputs. So the first output can run to one of these, but you can't use two or three or four in that case. Dave's also looking at a chainable DMX, uh, a chainable receiver. And what he means by that, he's thinking of adding, this is your input, he's thinking of adding an output so that you can run a cable to the next one, not have to run them all the way back to your F16. So you can daisy chain several of these together on a single Ethernet cable. All right, so that's in development, it's not out yet, uh, but he's working on that one. And that just will minimize the amount of wiring. So if you've got a few things you know, over an area, you can just daisy chain these together. They will, of course, share the outputs that are allocated though. So you probably won't be able to have large elements, but if you've got a few small elements, that would work. Other Falcon products, while I'm at it, um, there's the power distribution board. Um, this, is, this is really just about taking some power in, running it through a bunch of users and pushing it out. Um, while the Falcon board can run a huge number of pixels, you do need to be sensitive to how much power you run through it. And I would not be trying to power 16,000 pixels through a, a Falcon board, you would burn the board out. So be careful about that. Um, Dave also has a, has a PiCat, um, which can run a couple of pixel streams, a DMX more output, and includes a real-time clock. Um, there is also a project that's going on, uh, not just with Dave, but with uh, um, Bill Porter, I think it is. Uh, they're looking at taking an ES pixel stick and putting an FSCQ file on it, and, uh, and then just using sync packets. So today, the ESP pixel stick can run a universe, maybe two, and then it starts to run into Wi-Fi issues and lag issues. But if you were to put an FSCQ file on it, the ESP is actually a pretty powerful board, and you may be able to run significantly more out of the pixel stick in that case. And so Dave's been doing some of the work on building that. That's it. <laughs> Did everyone come back? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did everyone come back?